Research and development drives technological progress, but is heavily concentrated in just a few high-income countries. The US alone accounts for 25% of global R&D, and the EU for another 20%, while Africa and South Asia combined account for less than 4%. Do these patterns lead to disparities in economic outcomes? If innovation is partly tailored to the specific context in which it is developed, then technologies originating in wealthy countries may be inappropriate or have limited usefulness in other settings. As such, the skewed distribution of R&D may impede technology diffusion and lead to persistent inequities. This paper investigates the inappropriate technology hypothesis in the context of global agriculture. This is a setting with large and persistent productivity differences across countries, and R&D is dominated by a small set of biotech firms in rich countries. To quantify how this shapes the technology frontier, the authors use data on the global distribution of crop pests and pathogens. CPPs are a key target of biotech innovation, and individual technologies are often aimed at developing crop resistance to particular pests. This specificity is notable, as CPP environments differ around the world. If innovation is biased toward the ecological threats present in countries where most R&D takes place, then many frontier technologies may be ineffective in other environments. As a concrete example, the African maize stock borer and the western corn rootworm are both CPPs that affect maize. But while the stock borer is present in Africa and not the US, the opposite is true of the rootworm. Because of its large impact on US production, the rootworm has been a major target for biotech innovation, while the stock borer has not, and as a result, Genetically modified maize varieties are often ineffective in sub-Saharan Africa. These same dynamics are reflected in the aggregate data. Innovators tend to focus on locally present CPPs and, correspondingly, substantially more technology is developed to combat CPPs that exist in high-income, research-intensive countries like the US. In fact, the number of patents related to CPPs that are present only in the US far exceeds the number related to CPPs present only in Brazil or India, two of the world's largest, but significantly less research-intensive, agricultural economies. Given these patterns, the question is whether inappropriateness shapes technology diffusion. Do ecological differences prevent a technology adapted for one environment from being applied in another? To answer this, the authors develop a measure of CPP mismatch that summarizes differences in the CPP environment at the level of a given pair of countries and a given crop. And they find that ecological differences are a substantial barrier to technology diffusion. CPP dissimilarities reduce international technology transfer by 30% for the median crop and country pair, and the effects are between 6 and 30 times larger when it comes to frontier innovators. Being ecologically dissimilar from research hubs like the US can leave a country with little or no appropriate modern technology. There are also consequences for production and specialization. A one standard deviation increase in CPP mismatch with a frontier country lowers output by 0.51 standard deviations. Even after controlling for innate ecological suitability, countries produce less of specific crops if their local crop environment is more dissimilar from the frontiers. In other words, the set of good geographies for a given crop 
is partly determined by where the research hub for that crop happens to be. As a case study of particular interest, these figures show how inappropriateness shaped the impact of the Green Revolution of the 1960s and 70s. This was a concerted international effort to develop high-yielding varieties of staple crops for countries at risk of famine. But the adoption and production of these new varieties was inhibited in areas where the CPP environment was dissimilar from that of the research centers involved. Overall, the authors estimate that inappropriateness reduces average global agricultural productivity by 40 to 50 percent and explains 10 to 15 percent of cross-country disparities in productivity. The largest losses are concentrated in Africa and Asia, and as seen here, these are precisely the countries that are least productive today. This indicates that the interaction between ecological differences and the dynamics of global innovation sustains existing inequalities. Regions that are unproductive today are kept unproductive by an absence of appropriate technology, and these neglected agricultural ecosystems are concentrated in poorer parts of the world. How might this change in future? Consider two ongoing scenarios. First, while the US and Western Europe have led biotech investment for the past several decades, there has been rapid growth in Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Because these countries span a wider range of ecological diversity, their rise as biotech leaders is predicted to increase productivity by 18.5% on average, with countries in Africa particularly standing to gain. But there are also clear losers, including countries in Asia and Europe who have benefited from their ecological similarity to the current frontier. Finally, climate change may reduce the ecological dissimilarities between countries as rising temperatures lead to a systematic poleward shift in the habitable range of CPPs. The impact of this change on the direction of innovation is predicted to have a positive effect on productivity, with the benefits spread relatively evenly across space. Thus, while the overall effect of CPP movement on productivity may not be positive, some of the direct negative effects may be offset if climate change coordinates international research on a more common set of threats. In conclusion, this paper shows how inappropriateness shapes technology diffusion and global production. As the geography of innovation and ecology continue to change, understanding how these dynamics will evolve is an important area for future research. To read more on this topic, you can check out the paper's references to other related work. This includes research on the inappropriate technology hypothesis, the determinants of technology diffusion, and the effects of environmental conditions on economic development.